Spurs. Many of you are with me every day now, and I love it. And today, I am going to talk about predestination. This is the most important truth that I want to deal with today because so many questions about it. And um, I'm going to wait, and then tomorrow, uh, I'm going to wait till I say my hellos, and then tomorrow, I'm going to deal with Hebrews 6, Hebrews 10. What does it mean to sin willfully? Because it says if we sin willfully, there's no place for repentance. So we're going to deal with that tomorrow. Don't miss tomorrow. But hello to Veneja. And hello to Vimala. And yes, I will pray for your needs. I promise at the end of the uh, time with you today. Hello to Shalun and to Samuel. Hello to Sangeet, Justin, Kisha, Humera. Hello to Nalubega, also who needs prayer. And we're going to pray today, yes. Hello to Kavita. Hello to Nalini. Well, I'm going to begin ministering the Word because I have so much to talk about today. So let's pray. Wonderful Lord Jesus, I thank you for your Word. I thank you for your blessed promises. To you and only to you belongs the glory, the majesty, and the praise. Amen. I was 19 years old when I heard a man for the first time teach on predestination. It was St. Matthew's prayer meeting, Toronto, Ontario, on a Friday night. I used to go to a place, uh, to a prayer meeting called St. Matthew. And this wonderful man came and I got so lit up. When he began teaching, I just, the joy, the joy I experienced because I had never heard in my life that God chose us before the foundation of the world. Never have I heard in my life that I, as the Bible says, that God Almighty knew me before the foundation of the world. Look what it says in 1 Peter 1 verse 2, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Wow! Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. When I, when, when I discovered it, the joy that took hold of my life was unbelievable. And this man began to talk about how the Lord was crucified for you and me before the foundation of the world. That was the first time I ever heard it. Listen to the words from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead. Oh, I'm reading verse 21. That's a good one too. But let's read verse 20 and 21. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. In other words, salvation is not from ourselves. God saved us. He chose us. He brought us to himself. He even gave us the, the faith to believe. Think about all that. Isn't that incredible? Because it says in verse 20, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, that, that is that the Lord Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who, who by him do believe in God. Without the Lord, you and I can't believe. He, he gave us the faith to believe. So when we talk about predestination, what are we talking about? We're talking about the fact that the Lord Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world. Let's look at Revelation 13, verse 8. And it says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, 
whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So let's deal with this one matter at a time. The Lord Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world. Number two, you and I were elected, chosen. That's why we are called the elect. Before the foundation of the world through the knowledge of God. Now, the word of God makes it very clear that our names were written in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. And this is where the problem begins. Well, if my name was written, I'm in for good, saved, oh, forever, always saved. Once saved, always saved, is believed by millions of Christians. Well, as many millions believe, no, we still have a responsibility. I'm one of them who believe we have a responsibility. I've been talking about it since Monday because we have to follow. Remember what I showed you from the Gospel of John where the Bible clearly states. Let's go back one more time, one more time in case somebody didn't, you know, wasn't with us and, and uh, didn't hear it, didn't get it and so forth. But John chapter 10, let's look at verse 28 and 29. And I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave me, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. Father's hand. So we saw that. But the responsibility, like I've been saying to you, is verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So following the Lord is the key here. This is where the balance comes in. Now, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Let's read it together and see what the Bible has to say about predestination. And then I'm going to say a little more to you to bring clarity. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, past tense, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath, past tense, in eternity past, chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Now, when it says chosen us in him, he chose us in his own heart. He looked through the corridors of history and saw you and said, I want him, I want her. And your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This is clear in the Bible. So, chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Meaning God chose you to be holy, declared that you would be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So we are predestined, we're adopted. Verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. So here you have we are accepted. I'm going to give you that list in just a moment, but let's keep reading. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Now, when you look at this list, and this is where people get a little messed up because, well, I'm in, I'm always in, eternally in. Once saved, always saved. Well, let's see what the Bible has to say about it. Number one, blessed with all spiritual blessings. Number two, we've been chosen in him before the foundation of the world. 
Number three, that we should be holy. Number four, that we should be without blame. Number five, without blame in love. Number six, adopt, we, we've been adopted as children. Number seven, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted. We are accepted in the beloved. Number eight, we've been redeemed, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Number nine, the forgiveness of sins. All this was done before the foundation of the world. According to the riches of his grace. Number ten, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom. So number ten, he already gave you wisdom and prudence. Watch this now, I'm not yet done. Number 11, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. And finally, number 12, it's his purposed pleasure, according to his good pleasure, with which has purposed in himself. Now, even though we read all this, and let's go quickly also to Romans chapter 8. It's very important that we see both sides. This is why millions believe one thing and millions believe the exact opposite. So, which is it? Is it predestination and Calvinism? Or is it what is called Arminianism? <clears throat> so, verse 29 of Romans 8. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. Wonderful. It's all very beautiful. It's all very clear. Now, we have to also go to another portion of Scripture because Paul the Apostle dealt with very clearly and I want you to get your Bible and see it with me because the Bible answers the Bible. I'd like you to go to Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to begin reading verse 21. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. We just read that in Ephesians chapter 1. But here's what it says in verse 23. This is what brings the balance. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard. So, predestination, absolutely. But there is responsibility. I have to continue in the faith. I have to remain grounded and settled. And I will not be moved for it says, if you are grounded and settled and be not moved from the hope. So if I'm not moved from the hope of the gospel. Do you recall what I said to you um, a few days ago from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So how can someone go from being chosen in the Lord before the foundation of the world and now that same person departs from the faith and listens to demons? That's where the trouble is. It's because they did not continue to follow. We have to continue in the faith. It's so simple. So, the Lord God, the Bible says that Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world in the heart of God. 
the Bible clearly says that God, through his foreknowledge, he knew we would be his children. Through the foreknowledge of God, sanctified us, set us apart for himself. Wrote our names in the Lamb's book of life. His will was that we be holy, blameless, stand before him in love. But at the same time, it says, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Bible also says, you know, this is all in the word of God. You know, we, some people get confused for no reason. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, let me just go back and read verse 1, 2, and 3 because it will give you the whole picture. Now we, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, meaning the rapture, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit or by word, nor by letter, as from us, that that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, that for that day shall not come except there come first, there come a falling away first. So here, here we see many will fall away from the faith. Many will depart from the faith, just like he said in 1 Timothy 4.1, giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils. How can it be? Because, you see, we all have a responsibility. We all have choice. We need to say yes to Jesus continually, continuing in the faith. And this is where the Lord one day just gave me the clear answer. Because you cannot deny that the Bible teaches predestination, nor can you deny that the Bible teaches responsibility. As many scriptures teach predestination and the, and the plan of God for our soul, and, and then there's just as many that teach responsibility. He that endures unto the end shall be saved. So many scriptures. If you stay in the faith and be steadfast, unmovable in the faith. So, what is my responsibility? The word. To receive the word. Here's what I ask people. If you look at Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is in Caesarea Philippi. He asks the question, Whom do men say that I am? Well, Lord, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're one of the prophets. Whom do you say that I am? Peter speaks and says, You're the Son of God. You're the Christ. You're the Son of God. The Lord responds, Flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Then he gives Peter the guarantee of his salvation when he says, I give you the keys of the kingdom, meaning the gates are open for you. But what happened there? Four things happened. And this is every believer, every true believer will experience these four things. Number one, Peter was standing face to face with the Son of God. Number two, he received a revelation by the Holy Spirit that this is the Son of God. Number three, he acknowledged and he spoke and said, you are the Christ, the Son of God. Number four, he acknowledged publicly. He wasn't ashamed to speak it out loud. These four things guarantee you'll stay in the faith. Number one, have you had a face-to-face -face encounter with the Son of God? Number two, did you receive a revelation of the Holy Spirit that this is the Messiah? where well, you did not find it from, from a book or a, even reading the Bible. That the Holy Spirit through, through the Word of God revealed to you, this is the Messiah. Many claim they are the Messiah, but there's only one true Messiah. His name is Jesus, the Son of God. Today, what do we hear out there? We hear interfaith. We hear, let's find common grounds with other religions. 
Jesus is only one way to heaven because there's deception out there. Big deception out there. Yet the Bible is clear. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and the life. No man will come to the Father without me. No man, but by me. Simple. He is the Savior of the world. He is Jesus, the Son of God who rose from the dead. My son Joshua asked me one day, he said, now dad, many of my friends want to know why is it that Jesus is the only way to heaven? I said, because he's the only one who rose from the dead. And because he rose from the dead, he qualifies to be the savior. No one else rose from the dead. They're all dead. Only Jesus rose from the dead and he's alive and alive forevermore. So when you've had a face to face encounter, when you received that revelation by the Holy Spirit, this is the son of God. And when you acknowledge it, and acknowledge it for the rest of your life. And this is where people miss it. They stop acknowledging that Jesus is the Savior because they're not following him. Why? They're lacking the Word of God. It's the Word that keeps us. It's the Word of God that keeps us alive in the faith. It's continual. It's not a past tense repentance. It's not a past tense coming into the faith. It's staying in the faith, abiding in the faith, keeping the faith by the word of God. That's the only thing I know that the Bible says that will keep your soul. Hallelujah. Keep your soul in his loving hands when you keep his word in your heart. I have hid your word in my heart that I might not sin against your Lord. Psalm 119.11 says, when you hide that word in your heart, you'll never fall away. You'll never fall away. If you add to your faith virtue. Oh, how? The word. Patience, how? The word. Loving your, your brothers and sisters, how? The word. The word of God is that, is, is that key that gives us the power to live that Christian life. So anyone who is ignoring the word will, will surely fall away. Anyone who is not abiding in the Lord, if my words abide in you, Jesus said quite clearly in John 15, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, here's the key, you abide in me and my word abides in you. you, can, you what, what he was saying is quite clear. You cannot abide in me if my word is not abiding in you. And then you'll bring fruit and much fruit and more fruit. So you can't abide in me, the Lord said, unless my word abides in you. Well, I'm abiding in Jesus, but is the word abiding in you? That's the question. Let the word of Christ dwell richly within you, and that will keep you in the Lord for all eternity. What is my job? Don't neglect the word of God. Always receive the truth of the Word of God. God will not force you and I to open our Bible and read it. We have to do it. God will not force you and I to study it. We have to do it. And when we do, God gives us the power to follow and to stay in the faith. So simple. So simple. I want to pray with you now. And tomorrow I'm going to deal with something a little more difficult for some people. That's Hebrews 6 and Hebrews 10. If we sin willfully, there's no place for repentance. I'll clear all that up for you tomorrow, okay? But now, Father, in the sweetest name of Jesus, let your word dwell richly, richly in every believer listening to me right now, Lord. Oh, blessed Holy Spirit, anoint them, empower them, to live the Christian life. Lord, your word declares, now unto him that's able to keep us from falling, be all glory and honor and praise to the only wise God. We give you the praise, Lord. Keep them as the apple of the eye. Hide them under the shadow of your wings. In Jesus' name. Now be empowered by the word of the living God. And Lord, meet every need now, whether it be spiritual, emotional, 
physical or financial, meet every need, Lord, your people have sent their prayer requests already, Lord. Bless them and answer that prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Every day I have been believing with you that God would give you a property to secure your future. I've just felt to really do it this week because I believe God really wants you to be blessed and to be secure in your tomorrow financially. And the Lord promised that he would give us property and land, houses and land with persecution. He didn't promise to give us money, gold and silver because it's all in the land. But he did promise to give us land and homes with persecution. Father, we, be, we believe you for this. Lord, I pray everyone here who needs a home will find one. And Lord, I pray give them what it takes to pay for it, that they'll not be in debt in Jesus' name. Lord, give them property. Bless them with security financially for their tomorrow in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. What must you do? Give to show your, your, yourself faithful and a faithful man will abound with blessings. And as we give, we're saying, Lord, you can trust me with property. As you give, you can say, Lord, you can trust me with a lot more than property. So give right now, will you? Sow your seed. And if we are the minister that's blessing you, then this is where your tithe also belongs. It belongs to the place that feeds your life. So you can do it right now online, right there on the platform you're watching me on, or go to benihin.org, or just follow the, the instruction given on the screen, whatever you're watching. Or you can text it, BHM45777. Don't miss tomorrow. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.